I used to look out of this window at the beginning of our administration. And the view then was a very different one from the view now. And then we were searching for new buildings, new property tax base on which we could um, have some assessments and obtain new revenues and cut the property tax rates. And we'd seen what had occurred in Cleveland and Detroit and St. Louis and Newark, New Jersey very high property tax rates, very little prospects for new life in the city. And we wanted to make certain that our city would be different, that it would be a great city. And thus we began to try to sell Indianapolis to people all over this country who could invest new dollars and come themselves as professional people, as hardworking people to make a difference in a great city. And they came. They came with hundreds of millions of dollars to build beautiful new buildings, to build new factories, to provide new jobs, to provide new educational and cultural opportunities. And with all of the new people who came, came the new wealth, with which we built over 60 new parks. Over one quarter of all the new value in this city in the last seven years alone. And and that's undergirded the financing of hundreds of miles of new streets and roads, of tens of new miles of sewers, of tremendous advances in cleaner air and cleaner water. These have been great years of advancement and achievement. The Council on Municipal Performance, in, in looking at the 32 largest city economies in the country, determined that Indianapolis and Houston, Texas, were the strongest in 1974. Strongest because in Indianapolis, the fewest uh, people were beneath the poverty line of income, just 7%. The range between the poorest and the wealthiest was one of the narrowest in the country. The high per capita income, the income of the average citizen, was among the highest. The amount of discretionary dollars, dollars that had some freedom to be spent to enhance quality of life was among the highest in our city. And this growth, this strength, undergirds a great tomorrow of tremendous promise on the things that we have now. But times change. And the agenda now is a pretty grim one for Indianapolis and for all Hoosier cities. The problems now are inflation and seemingly overzealous governmental regulation, governmental over-legislation that really hits us hard and threatens really the life and the promise of all that we've seen in the past. It's a new agenda and it's a tough agenda. You know, inflation is the sort of thing that hits not only uh, the ordinary citizen with a 12% hidden tax in the night that he didn't vote on, didn't see. It hits cities. It, it hits our prices for gasoline and cement and asphalt for all the things in the parks, all the things that are so important in police and fire protection. I've often said that it's not federal dollars we need in this city. We could get along with all, without all the federal money. As a matter of fact, if we could count on the stability of the dollars we collect here, that's the important thing. Inflation has hit all of us hard, and so has governmental overregulation. The fact of the matter is that EPA has caused a, a new proposal for a surcharge of two to four dollars for everybody, rich or poor, who drives to this city, suggested the same sorts of controls for suburban shopping centers, for every place where people gather together. That sort of thing could choke off the life of this city and all Hoosier cities. This is the reason that I'm running for the Senate of the United States, because I can make a difference for Indiana. I am determined to fight to stop inflation, to stop the overregulation by a dominant, aggressive, and sometimes arrogant federal government and its bureaucracy that threatens the lifeblood of our growth and our future. This is why I want great cities, great suburbs, and great farms, why I'll be a, a senator for Indiana if I have your support.